I want to talk to you about leveraging empathy in your work, but also how to manage the uh, energetic kind of influence of others when you're being empathetic. Because for those of you who are more sensitive to other people's moods or the vibe that they're giving off, specifically teachers, you might find that it can be quite draining at times. So empathy is great, but you also need to be anchored in your own being um, and have a level of self-steadiness, let's say, in order to get the most out of it. So first off, I'll tell you how I often approach my client work in both movement and in writing. I like to start before the interaction or the meeting with a morning or a ritual, which brings me into awareness of my own body and my own self. This could be, if I don't have a lot of time, something as simple as eating an apple or a piece of chocolate or drinking a cup of tea. If I have more time, it might be a training session. Um, Specifically, if I'm working with a client in a new space, there'll be an element of me making my, my myself at home in that space. And that starts with me being at home in my own space within my body. But sometimes it means, like if I'm training someone outside, doing a little bit of a session there before they come along and I meet them for their personal training. Um, if I'm going to meet with someone on a Zoom call to do a brief on the writing project, it might mean just sitting and being early, being ready and having that piece of chocolate. So it begins with anchoring in your own being. Only once you've done this can you have the emotional stability to hold space for someone else. And holding space is what you have to do. In other words, occupying um, the same awareness that they are occupying and to a degree uh, making space within your awareness for their emotions to come and go. And that's the key part in being able to deliver a really high quality, bespoke, tailored service. Because if I can understand how you're feeling, what your values are, what's driving you, then I can both write better for you, if that's what I'm doing, or I can train you in a more effective way because I know what it feels like to be in your body. So we're dealing with empathy and with this um, self-steadiness combined with holding of space and being open, but just in two different ways. One is in movement and one is in writing, but they're both emergent states that come from the other, the other person that I'm working with. So I feel into that person's energy or their presence or the manner in which they are in the room and how that makes me feel. And then I respond to that based on intuition. And the intuition is experience. So how many people I've trained before, how many human beings I've interacted with, the cues that I'm picking up that tell me that the person is feeling tense, that they're feeling impatient, or that they're feeling um, calm, all these little things. So as I listen to what they're saying to me, or as I watch what they do, I'm seeing how they say it or how they do it. And I'm drawing from my library of past experiences, trusting in that knowledge that I've gained through experience to direct how I speak to them. Because I'm not going to speak to two people of the same fitness level in the same way if one of them is coming from a different emotional or energetic state. Um, and I'm not going to write for two arborist businesses in the same way if one of them is coming from um, a background of like tree huggy earthy connection and the other one is coming from uh, more of a let's say straight up traditional scientific technical kind of paradigm so there are many layers that happen before you actually even do anything. Many layers of listening, many layers of empathy, 
Um, and you have to know yourself. You have to pay attention to your own experience of the conversation or of the meeting before you can even begin to give the right service. Um, and this may be seen as a soft skill. This whole empathy talk or the energetic awareness talk may be seen as something which is extracurricular. That's an add-on. But really, it's essential because it forms the foundation not only of the relationship, but of your approach to the work as a service provider of some kind. And also, very much, that work is very much contained within the relationship. So, like, if that person trusts you, if they feel that you are both listening and at the same time steady in yourself, then the work is more productive and the scope of the work you can do, the depth of the work uh, increases. So I'm obviously speaking in quite general terms here because I want this to be something that you can think about applying to your own work or your own interactions with people. And I just want to tell you exactly how it goes for me. Um, but I will give you an example now. Often you'll know when you're working with people in a coaching capacity specifically that there's something they're not quite telling you or there's something that doesn't quite add up or you can see that person is being inconsistent in some way. So they're telling you that they want to achieve X but their behavior says Y. Um, and they're coming up with reasons and they're kind of complicating it and they're, they're saying, oh, I read about this program, I did this and I've been trying to do that, blah, 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 blah. And you know that it's actually just a really simple thing that they're avoiding taking care of their diet, for example, or they're just not showing up consistently for whatever reason, but they're looking for the right answers in other places when there's this glaringly obvious problem that you can see as a coach that, that they either can't see or that they don't want to look at. An example of using this empathetic approach is to feel out whether or not it's going to be beneficial for you to say, hey, forget that, just pay attention to this problem right here, just look at this. Or whether you say, ah, oh, so have you found this problem comes up a lot? Have you found this problem comes up uh, in the same set of circumstances? Um, what other things might this problem be related to? Can you see how they're two different approaches? One of them, you're like, hey, look here, point to this. This is the problem. The other one, you're leading inquiry and hoping that maybe they will circle back to seeing that initial problem. Um, once they feel safe in the relationship because you're asking, not telling. So these are two different approaches. For some people, you want to be direct and say, hey, dude, like, just fucking look at this. You're being inconsistent. Why, why are you worried about the rest? For someone else, that's going to completely sever their sense of trust in you, especially if it's early on in your relationship as a coach and client. Um, and so for that person, you're going to want to build more trust and then gradually kind of work on testing their resilience to more directness uh, and how that would relate to writing would be, um, you know, you can, you can look at someone's copy. I'll look at someone's website, the about page, and I think, oh, fuck, this, this isn't written very well. I can either say, hey, here's how you should write this and here's how I'll write it for you. Um, and I can maybe do that with some degree of accuracy just by really focusing on the information I have and just like doing it better than they could and learning about them in that process. Or I can kind of involve them more and be a bit more patient by asking questions like, what are you hoping to express here? Uh, what kind of voice would you like me to portray you in? All of these things, they take more time, but they give someone more trust in the fact that you're listening and sometimes that's better for the long-term relationship. Um, so you've got to vibe it. How does this person come across? Are they kind of person that likes directness or are they the kind of person that's going to need a little bit of um, tempering of, of your directness? So there you go. That's, that's a 10-minute talk on using empathy in different ways. I do it in movement and in copywriting services, but how do you do it? How do you prime yourself to be able to be as empathetic as possible without becoming drained and frazzled because you've just let someone uh, come in and, and completely dominate the interaction? How do you hold your space and hold space for others in your work?